Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Professor Abdul Karim from Ministry Science uh, Malaysia. Um, in this lecture, I will talk about um, edible oil refining and the second part of um, the lecture on this topic. So um, I, will dis uh, I will discuss in more detail about the physical and uh, chemical refining process of a crude palm oil. This diagram shows the various stages in the refining of uh, crude palm oil. So let's start uh, from this point. This is crude oil. It will uh, pass to a um, heater or a heat exchanger. Uh, the oil will be uh, heated to increase the temperature uh, and uh, reduce uh, the vis viscosity so that it can flow easily through the uh, processing line. And at this point, some reagent uh, will be added for the gumming process. So this can be uh, in the form of phosphoric acid or citric acid um, if uh, we use uh, acid bleaching or oh, sorry uh, acid degumming or we can we can also use uh, hot water uh, if the oil contain uh, hydratable uh, phosphatides. So the gums or the phos phosphatides will be uh, removed at this stage in the degumming process. Usually, a um, high-speed mixer is required here to mix the oil and the reagents uh, intimately and uniformly. Then, uh, the oil will go through the next step. Um, in a chemical refining process, the next step would be the neutralization process where the sodium hydroxide or the alkali will be added and this will react with the free uh, fatty acids um, and uh, the gums. Uh, will be formed here. So uh, we have the oil and the gums together um, in the during the form during the neutralization process. So we need the centrifuge to separate the oil uh, from the gums or from the soap. Uh, the next step in the process is uh, bleaching. So bleaching, uh, the function of bleaching to, is to remove the uh, coloring compound uh, and, and other um, compounds like uh, ketones, aldehydes, uh, trace metals, and, and so on. So we add the adsorbent uh, in the form of uh, bleaching clay or bleaching earth. And uh, the process is done under vacuum and elevated temperature uh, to reduce the color of the crude oil. And um, after the bleaching, the oil will, pump, will be pumped through a series of uh, filters to separate the oil from the uh, adsorbent uh, material and perhaps uh, some uh, polishing step to ensure the bleaching earth, the spent bleaching earth uh, particles will be removed uh, completely. Um, because the next step is uh, deodorization. So before the oil goes through the deodorization process, uh, it's very important to make sure the oil doesn't contain any uh, residual bleaching earth or soap uh, from the previous uh, step. So here we have a high uh, pack column, which is the the, uh, the distillation column to uh, deodorize and to remove the free fatty acid and the volatiles from the oil. And uh, the Volatile material will be recovered as uh, distillate and the oil uh, will, be, uh, re uh, will be recovered as uh, RBD oil, which is a refined bleach deodorized oil. Let's uh, look at more detail on the degumming uh, process. Degumming basically is a process to remove the um, gummy uh, material or mis miscellaneous uh, material from the crude oil. These are basically uh, phosphatides um, in the crude oil. So we can use water or dilute acid uh, in the form of phosphoric or citric acid or sometimes uh, dilute sodium hydroxide. There are actually two types of uh, phosphatides. One is called hydratable uh, phos phosphatides which, uh, which can be hydrated by using uh, hot water and the other one is non-hydratable uh, phosphatides which can only be uh, removed by using uh, acid. So for example, uh, soy in, uh, soybean oil 
contain high amount of uh, hydratable, con uh, hydratable phosphatides. So we can use hot water to remove the gums and, uh, remove, and the hydrated gums that, that we remove from the soybean oil actually can be used as a raw material for uh, lecithin processing. So water, for water degumming, these are the conditions, the temperature between 60 to 80 degrees Celsius and the time between 20 to 30 minutes. And the wet gums that are formed can be removed by uh, centrifugation. As I mentioned in the previous slide, uh, we can use water degumming uh, if the crude oil contains a uh, high amount of uh, hydratable phosphatides. But if the oil contains uh, non-hydratable uh, phosphatides, we have to use a concentrated acid uh, to remove the phosphatides. And this process is called uh, acid degumming. So we can use uh, phosphoric acid between 0.1 to 0.3% uh, of the 85% uh, solution or we can use uh, citric acid uh, with this concentration. The degumming step is actually uh, especially very important in physical uh, refining. Um, so we need to uh, remove almost 100% of uh, phosphatides and this process is called uh, super degumming to prepare the oil be, uh, before it goes through the physical refining. Uh, this diagram shows the uh, various stages in uh, water degumming uh, process. Water degumming is suitable if the oil contains high amount of um, uh, hydratable phosphatides, for example, uh, soybean oil. So um, the crude oil will be pumped through the heat exchanger to heat up the oil to the optimum uh, temperature, then um, after that, the hot water will be added uh, to the oil. The amount of uh, hot water added is calculated to be uh, equivalent or correspond to the amount of uh, phosphatides in the oil. And it will go to the uh, centrifugal uh, mixer here, and will be, uh, because of the intense uh, mixing, the phosphatides will be hydrated uh, very fast, and um, after that, it will go to the uh, centrifuge or the separator uh, to separate the oil uh, from the gums. Um, the oil can, can go directly to, uh, to the next uh, refining uh, process or alternatively, if the, if the oil is to be uh, stored for some time, uh, the, uh, it will go through the drying process in the vacuum dryer to remove the water as much as possible because we cannot leave the water inside the oil because it can cause hydrolysis. So the final step, the final product at the end of the uh, degumming uh, process is the degum oil. And um, the picture down here is the, uh, the separator, how the, how the uh, separator looks like. And this diagram shows the various stages in uh, acid degumming process. Acid degumming process um, is suitable when the oil contains significant amount of uh, non-hydratable uh, phosphatides. Um, acid gumming is uh, commonly used for our palm oil or palm kernel oil uh, in, the refine, in the refining uh, process. So the crude oil will go to uh, the heater and the acid uh, in the form of phosphoric acid will be added at this point and uh, mixed with the oil and uh, it will go, it will, um, go to the holding tank um, and the next step, the hot water will be added uh, to hydrate the, the hydratable uh, phosphatides in the oil. Again, uh, mix and go to the holding tank and uh, before it will go to the separator to separate the gum uh, from the oil and again, uh, if necessary, the oil will be uh, dry in the vacuum dryer. Um, and finally, we get the, the degum oil, uh, which, is, uh, which, which is ready to go for the next uh, uh, step, which is the bleaching step. If we use uh, chemical refining to refine the crude oil, um, so there's a step called uh, neutralization where we will add the alkali to um, neutralize the acid or the free fatty acid in the crude oil. So the purpose of this step um, 
is uh, basically to remove almost all of the free fatty acid present uh, in the crude oil down to a very low level, uh, typically below or to uh, between 0.01 to uh, 0.03 uh, percent. Uh, usually in the crude oil, we have between 3 to 5 percent. So you can see there's a large reduction uh, of free fatty acid at the, uh, during the neutralization step. The concentration of sodium hydroxide used uh, in the neutralization step is between 8 to 24 uh, percent. This uh, concentration will depend on the type of oil uh, and also the initial amount of the free fatty acid. So the uh, alkali will react with the free fatty acid to produce uh, the soaps uh, which is insoluble and it's called soap stock which can be removed by the, sep by the separator or by centrifugation. So basically there are uh, three steps in the neutralization process. Uh, the neutralization itself, then we add the alkali and, uh, to the oil, then uh, we remove the soap, uh, separate the soap from the soap stock from the oil by using uh, centrifugation. Uh, but after that, uh, there's uh, probably some traces of soap which can be uh, removed uh, further by washing step. And finally, drying to remove uh, whatever moisture is still there down to a very uh, low level around 0.1%. Uh, this diagram shows a general outline of uh, standard neutralization in the alkali uh, refining, um, but the actual process would depend on the type of oil and the amount of gums or uh, free fatty acid in the oil. Uh, for example, some oil may require some conditioning, so basically uh, uh, Depending on the amount of, of the gums and free fatty acid, it may require uh, uh, some um, pre degumming uh, step. Um, then the alkali will be added. So this is the neutralization step here. And um, the separator would, uh, will separate uh, the soap stock uh, from the oil. And the, the oil might contain some uh, residual uh, soap stock. So it will require uh, probably a few steps of uh, washing and maybe even uh, re, uh, refining. So the quality control would uh, determine whether how many washing steps or whether uh, re-refining is needed. Uh, so that the final oil uh, will contain very low amount of uh, free fatty acid and maybe drying step is also required to bring down the moisture uh, to uh, you know, around 0.1%. Uh, uh, and finally, we get the uh, neutralized oil. So this is the picture of separator, which um, used in the neutralization or degumming process to separate the heavy uh, layer of the, of the uh, sediments uh, from the lighter phase of the oil. Another major step in uh, crude oil uh, re refining is bleaching. Um, as we have seen in the, pre in the previous uh, lecture, crude palm oil has a dark orange or dark uh, red color. So in the refining uh, process, the, the aim is to remove this, this color uh, by, remo by removing the, the coloring compound, uh, which is uh, keratin and chlorophyll, by using a suitable uh, absorbent material. Bleaching is also the last stage prior to deodorization process. So it is important to uh, remove any residual uh, phosphatides from uh, previous uh, degumming process, uh, maybe uh, residual soaps from uh, the previous neutralization step, any um, residual metals and oxidation products. So this has to be removed, or removed uh, almost completely prior to uh, deodorization process. Originally, natural uh, bleaching clays were used as, an, as uh, an adsorbent in the bleaching process, but now, nowadays, uh, acid-activated bleaching earth are used uh, with higher adsorptive, catalytic, and uh, ion exchange uh, properties. So this picture shows the uh, bleaching tank. This is how it looks like. Um, so uh, in the bleaching process, the bleaching earth 
or the clay is added at uh, around 03 to 0.6%. Uh, and usually the process is done under vacuum uh, to reduce damage to, to the oil because we use uh, a high temperature around 100 to 110 degree uh, Celsius. The last step in the edible uh, oil refining is called uh, deodorization. In alkaline ref uh, refining, deodorization is a last step to remove any residual or traces of uh, free fatty acids which may uh, survive from the previous uh, step and also to remove aldehydes and ketones which are more volatile than the uh, triglycerides of the oil. Um, in physical refining, deodorization is uh, the most uh, important step to remove the free fatty acid. The high temperature during the deodorization also would decolorize the oil uh, because it will decompose uh, the pigments in the oil. So the final uh, deodorized oil actually will be uh, bland and uh, odorless. The process of uh, deodorization is basically a steam distillation done under vacuum. So um, it is uh, very important during this process to get a very uh, intimate mixing of the steam and the oil as well as the vacuum and the temperature. This, uh, the control of these uh, parameters are important to get an efficient uh, deodorization to remove the free fatty acid down to a very low level, you know, less than 0.01%. So how does these uh, different components uh, such as free fatty acid, tocopherol and, and other uh, components can be separated with oil uh, during the deodorization uh, process. Um, so the principle is actually based on the different degree of uh, volatility of the different components when compared to oil. So we can see here that uh, this is a plot of vapor pressure against uh, different temperature. So we can see for the oil, um, it requires a uh, high temperature to uh, make it uh, volatile, whereas uh, free fatty acid, which, is, uh, the small, which are the smaller uh, compound are uh, more volatile even at a uh, uh, lower temperature. So the different degree of volatility at different temperature uh, enable this different component being uh, separated from the oil. So let's look at some of the typical conditions during the uh, in the deodorizer in the deodorizer during the process. Uh, the typical conditions uh, as you can see here the pressure. So there is very low pressure. So the process is done under, basically under vacuum. Um, then the temperature is uh, very high, between 230 uh, to 200 degrees Celsius. And the time between 3 to uh, 8 hours for batch deodorizers or for semi-continuous uh, and continuous deodorizers, uh, much shorter between 15 to 60 minutes. So in the deodorizer unit, steam is parched. Uh, into the deaerated oil. The oil is deaerated to remove the air so that it will reduce the oxidation, especially at high temperature in the deodorizer. And the steam will, will, be, will come in the intimate contacts with the oil. So as the oil passes through several trays or compartments in the deodorizer, the volatile components are stripped away uh, by the steam and then uh, separately uh, condensed and collected as the uh, fatty acid uh, distillate. And next, the deodorized oil will be uh, cool uh, when it leaves the deodorizer. Okay, now let's look at more detail on the deodorizer uh, unit. This is the schematic diagram to show the structure of the deodorizer uh, column. And uh, on the right here, uh, this is uh, the, um, how it looks like from the top of the deodorizer column. Uh, this actual uh, thing, how it looks like from the top. So um, basically the oil comes from the top into the column and will go through several stages um, of stripping of the volatiles when it comes to you with the intim uh, in intimate contacts with the steam and finally we uh, it will uh, come out here as the deodorized uh, oil. So uh, 
on the top part here is uh, the the aerating the aerating tank where the oil will be uh, the, the air in the oil will be removed so the, the aeration process um, remove the air so that uh, it will reduce the oxidation of the oil during the deodorization process then uh, we have the heating tank here and the steam is being spatched inside and uh, the stripping of the free fatty acid and other volatiles uh, will take place uh, when the oil uh, flows through the uh, column in the deodorizer so during this process the steam that is uh, will be spatched into the deodorizer unit and will come with into intimate contacts with the oil and the high temperature and the vacuum condition will allow the volatiles to um, vaporize into the large headspace uh, vacuum uh, space here and will be removed uh, and collected uh, as uh, distillate. Phosphoric or citric acid may be uh, added as skeleting agents uh, into the uh, deodorized oil to deactivate any trace metals that may uh, still be present um, at this stage. So the end product of the refining process after the deodorization uh, step is called refined bleach deodorized oil or RBD oil. And this is usually marketed uh, as cooking or salad oil or can be used for uh, manufacturing of other types of uh, oil products. And the volatile components uh, during the deodorization process are removed uh, as uh, condensate and this actually contain uh, various compounds and, and this is called deodorizer uh, distillate and this can be uh, further separated into uh, tocopherol and, and sterols for uh, various application in pharmaceutical and cosmetic applications okay in this slide uh, it just show a picture of the deodorizing plant and uh, another one here showing the deodorizing uh, plant from the ins inside the factory okay so far we have discussed the process of chemical refining of uh, crude palm oil so now let's uh, discuss uh, briefly the physical refining so on this slide uh, we can um, this is actually the outline of the process of uh, physical refining uh, or physical refining plant um, and uh, we the, the, the outline shown here is for the Alpha Laval AB which is the uh, one of the major fin manufacturer of uh, physical refining plant uh, in the world so the starting point here is the uh, crude palm oil uh, the crude palm oil is, uh, is stored uh, usually in a large tank under nitrogen gas to minimize the oxidation. And next is the uh, degumming step. In physical refining, degumming is a very important step to remove uh, the gums from the oil. So usually we use uh, acid uh, degumming process. And uh, the process is done under reduced uh, pressure and the steam uh, is used here to elevate uh, the temperature to aid the uh, degumming process. The next step is the bleaching uh, process as shown here. So the oil is uh, mixed with the steam and uh, bleaching earth or the uh, bleaching clay uh, is added to absorb the coloring compound, the aldehyde ketones and, and the trace metals in, in the oil. And um, at this point, after the bleaching process, the color of the crude oil will be uh, reduced uh, significantly. From the bleaching tank, uh, the bleach oil will be pumped through uh, a series of uh, filter to remove the any uh, to remove the the spent uh, bleaching earth. Um, and this has to. And this uh, step is very critical to remove the insoluble particles uh, from the oil uh, before the oil is uh, pumped to the deodorizer unit. So uh, at this uh, at this point, uh, this is a stage of deodorization where the free fatty acids and other other volatile compounds are removed uh, from the oil, and the fatty acids are recovered. Then uh, 
uh, finally we get the refined deodorized uh, palm oil.